Hey world changers, Miss McCarthy here with your Florida Fast Math Freebie of the Week. I've created this weekly math series to help you feel calm and confident when it's time to throw down your best on the fast math assessment. Each week we'll practice a specific question type. These videos are short, they're sweet, they're to the point. And at the end of this video, I'll show you where you can access more in-depth videos to make math your jam. Are you ready to see what our focus is this week? Let me get a drum roll. It's editing task choice. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get to it and let me teach you. All right, fifth grade, let's get to your problem this week, okay? It says rewrite the number. There shouldn't be an S there. It says rewrite the number and then we have this number right here in expanded form. Expanded form is when we're stretching out the number, okay? When we expand the values okay we're stretching out the number expanded form all right so notice that i didn't read that number it's because we're going to get there in a second right but here we go we've got this number again and it said it can be written in expanded form as and then we have our editing task choice this type of a problem involves a drop down menu kind of all right so Let's talk about it. So you would just originally just see a box like this. So when you're seeing this on your test, a problem like this with the little, with the gray box, you'll see a gray box like this. And you'll also see a little arrow right there. When you click the arrow, it will drop down this box of answer choices that you can select. So you can see we have four drop down menus, meaning that we need to answer this problem with four different answer choices. Whichever one that we would click on the test, if this were a test, let's say that we selected this one right here, it should populate right into that gray box to show that that is the answer that you want, okay? And if you need to fix it, of course, you can just click that drop down menu again and select another answer. But that was just an example. I'm not even sure if that's the answer yet. So let's, let's go ahead and dive into tackling this problem. All right, so we have this number here. Okay, now as a teacher, the first thing that I would notice is this right here. What is this called? It's called a decimal point, right? It is not a comma. It is very different because this right here with the period, with the decimal point, is much different than this with a comma. The comma would make the seven, 700,000. The decimal point makes that digit seven, 700. 700 and 700,000 are very different values. So make sure that you're noticing right away that we've got a decimal point there. Just a reminder that when we read this decimal point, we say the word and. So that, I'm gonna go ahead and label my place values too. Zoom in a little bit. So the zero right here is in the ones place. The digit one is in the tens place and this is in the hundreds place, the seven, okay? So reading that, we have 710, and now let's go over to this one. The zero is in the tenths place, tenths place. The digit four is in the hundredths place, and that digit three is in what? The thousandths place, right? Okay. Thousands. Awesome. So reading that number would look like this. 710 and 43 thousandths. That's how we would read it. That's not really what this problem said, but I promised that I would go back and show you how to read that. So let's go ahead and now tackle what the values of these are. So we're looking here. I see in the very first box, we're looking at the digit seven, which is right here. That digit seven is in the hundreds place. So if we multiplied seven times 100, we would get a value of 700. So that is the answer choice there. I'm highlighting it, but you can just go ahead and circle it here and remember that it would be displayed in that gray box too. Next, we're looking at the digit one. The digit one is in which place? The tens place, it has a value of 10 then. So we want to select the one that says one times 10 to give us that value of 10. Again, 
if you're just practicing using paper and pencil, you could circle that there, but just know you would click it on your paper based test, on your computer based test, sorry. Next, what digit are we looking at in the next box? In the next drop down menu, we have the digit four, right? Let's take a look. Our digit four is right there and it is in the hundredths place. So we would need, it's not four times 10 and it's not four times one tenth because that would be in the tenths place. We're looking for this one right here. Four times one hundredth would give us a value of four hundredths. That is the one that we want. You would click it and highlight it if it were computer-based test. But since we're practicing paper pencil, let's go ahead and circle it too. And finally, we have the digit three right here. And that three is in which place? The thousandths place. Don't forget that at the end. Okay, so if somebody were looking at this and not seeing the not seeing the decimal point, but instead putting a comma, they would probably pick this one right here, right? Three times one, because it looks like it could be in the ones place, but we know that's a decimal point. And behind that, we have values that are less than one. So it's not three times one. And it's not three times one hundredth, because the three is not in the hundredths place. It's in the thousandths place. So we're going to click or select that one three times one thousand. Again, circling it here and all of those that we selected, if this were computer based, would be inputted into that gray box up top to show that that is the answer that we choose, okay? All right, make sure that you have all this copied and that is your Fast Math Freebie Problem of the Week. Now this is a message for the grown-ups in your life. If you are a teacher, parent, or educational leader looking to support your students with more practice in a safe environment, follow me over to McCarthyMathAcademy.com for tons of math videos specifically geared towards Florida's best standards. Just know that I would love the opportunity to make math fun, make it click, and make it stick for your students. So make sure that you check out those links for some more information. Cool? Before we go, let me remind you that practice is not something we do once we're good. It's the one thing we do that makes us good. If you want to get better, stronger, or more confident at something, you have to put the practice in. You've got to throw down your very best effort. I believe in you, and I'll see you next time, world changers.